Okay, awesome. We cleaned the data. Now what we need to do is data preparation. And then after that, we can actually train our first model. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so here's what I did for this section. The first thing I do is I copy the taxi data filtered one, which is the one I created before, into the text data prepared data frame. So this is very important to do actually, and I try to keep it, uh, keep the section separate and keep the section data frame separate too. Uh, as you, I mean, you can see that I say taxi data prepared. The data is not prepared yet, but at the end it will be prepared data because you know, at the end of the data preparation section, you can name it differently. So it's very important to name your um, data frames with a descriptive name. You don't want it to be like a long name where you're like text data filtered by this and that, and then sorted by this. But you want to make sure that it's understandable by you, but also by people who will read your code later. Um, so, but the main thing that I want to talk about here is that as you see, I am saying text data filtered dot copy. So why am I copying it to a new data frame? That's because let's say I made a mistake during my data preparation uh, section and now the data is ruined. I don't want to run everything from the beginning to be able to get this data that I was working on. So, you know, all if I mess up in the coming code, coming lines of code, I can just run this one again. All of a sudden, I have the data that I need again. I don't have to wait for the data to load to the notebook, everything to run again. So that's one reason. Um, but then why am I not just saying taxi data prepared equals to taxi data filtered? So that's actually something uh, that comes from a computer science theoretical kind of knowledge, but I think that's very important for you to know. Uh, there is something called a deep copy and a shallow copy. So when you copy uh, a data frame, which is, you know, this is a data frame, and this also is a data frame, it's a pandas data frames. When you copy it in a shallow way, it only copies to the, an address to the location of where this is stored. But when you deep copy it, which is by saying dot copy, then it basically copies everything and creates a new data frame. So when you make changes to the original one, they will, the new one will not be affected. So let me show you with a small example. So here I'm creating a data frame called first. So let me show the first data frame to you. It's like this, right? So, and then I'm saying second equals to first. Well, that will make the second look something like this, the same one. I'm also copying the first data frame to the third one, which will also look like this. So they're all the same. So if I make a change, to the first data frame. And let's say I drop the second column, the column B. Now my first data frame looks like this. The B column is gone. But my second data frame also looks like this because I only made a shallow copy and didn't make a deep copy. So that's why everything I do on the first one also happens to the second one. And vice versa, actually. If you change something on the second one, it also happens on the first one. But when you make a deep copy with the third one, then you create a whole different box. You just create the copy of the same box and they have different ad addresses. So you can see here, a third one is not affected by the change of the first one. So I hope this makes sense to you. Uh, I will keep doing this actually and later also in the notebook, I will just keep creating copies so that when I make changes, the original one is not affected and if I mess up, then I can just go back to the uh, beginning of my section and then fix it. So now you know why I'm doing this, why I am copying the previous data frame that we were working with into a new one. And I hope that makes sense to you. So the first thing that I want to do in this data preparation section is to understand the types uh, of the features that I have of the columns of the data frame. So here is a nifty little function that I use to see all the types of different columns. Um, so quickly, uh, I hope you have a background in Python types, or at least you know what those are. So for example, integer is just an integer. So it's a whole number. Uh, float is a decimal number. So it could be a fractional number. Uh, it doesn't have to be a whole number like integer. Uh, object most of the time means that it's a string. So I hope do you, I don't know if you know what a string is, but it's basically, um, text 
uh, but you, it doesn't only have to be a text. Of course, it could be a number, but you can save it in a text format where you're actually going to do that soon. Um, so some of these things are not in the format that I want them in. So I'm going to change their formats uh, to be able to work with them properly. The first thing I'm going to do is to change the format of the pickup time. Uh, it's a date time um, sort of feature and there is a type called date time. So I'm going to, it's called casting into uh, a new type. So I'm going to cast the pickup date time and drop off date time features into the date time type. <laughs> Um, and then what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to change some of these features from integer or float to string. Uh, no, I think I'm only going to do it from integer to string, not from float. Um, so the reason that I'm doing this is let's, let's look at the ones that I'm doing it on. So it's a rate, rate code ID, uh, rate code ID. Let's look at our, um, data dictionary. It is the final rate code in effect at the end of the trip. So it is actually, it is written in integers, but it actually is not a numerical number. So a numerical feature would be that two means that it's bigger than one. But in this case, JFK doesn't mean that it's higher or bigger than standard rate. So this is what we call a categorical function, a categorical feature. And how I want to have it is basically I put them as string. So the, uh, the model will see them as separate things. It will not see them as one, two, three, because if it sees it as numbers, it will think that three is bigger than two, two is bigger than one, and it will infer wrong things. So instead, it will see it as, you know, object one, object two, object three. It will just understand that they are different from each other, but there is no relationship of them. Uh, same at pickup location, drop off location. I don't want the model to think of them as relating to each other in, in like a higher or smaller, a greater or smaller kind of relationship. Uh, same with payment type. It is a category. It's, you know, either you pay cash or you pay with credit card or something else. So these are just different categories. They're not really related to each other. So after I do this, let's see what my types are. Yeah. So as I said, I changed the pickup and drop off date time into date time. And you can, we can see the type here and I changed the, no, I didn't change the passenger count because you know, three passengers is more passengers than two passengers. So it can stay as integer trip distance. Again, it's, uh, it's miles, it's distance. It is numerical, uh, rate code, pickup location ID, drop off location ID and payment type are now strings. Uh, but it, it says here as objects, that's how it is uh, written. And total amount is a fractional number. So it's float. So that, that makes sense. Okay. So now that these make sense to us, the next thing we're going to do is to try to extract a little bit more information from what we have. So we can have, we can use the features that we have in a more rich way. Well, I'll show you how to do that in the next video.